Welcome back to my Spanish kitchen. This is where I have all kinds of fun making super tasty dishes based on Spain's incredibly healthy Mediterranean diet. So if you're interested in learning some Spanish classics, go ahead and click the subscribe button below and join me today as we make a classic gluten-free, delicious almond cake. It's popular all over Spain. Historically, it came from the northern corner of Spain near Galicia, where Santiago de Compostela is, or the heart of the pilgrimage that people have gone on for hundreds of years to celebrate St. James. So let's get started. Tarta de Santiago only includes four ingredients, and they're simple to remember because they're all the same amount. 250 grams, of almond meal. Almond meal basically is finely, super finely ground almonds. That's it. 250 grams of sugar, 250 grams of eggs, and the easiest way to remember that is a large egg weighs about 50 grams. So do the math. We're gonna use five eggs today. I wanna grate a little bit of lemon peel in with the dish. We'll mix it all together. Put it in a buttered springform pan, and that's it. Into the oven, 30 minutes later, we'll be done. The first thing I wanna do is mix together all this finely ground almonds. By the way, I'm using Marcona because I love them. They're buttery, and it makes this cake so light and fluffy, but any almond you can get in the store will work. In Spain, you can buy this meal already ground up very fine. But if you don't find that in the store, don't worry about it. If you've got a food processor or a hand immersion blender, just zip it together and get it nice and fluffy like this, and that's good enough. To this, we're gonna add the 250 grams of sugar. I wanna mix these two things together just a little bit before I start adding the eggs one at a time. Now that I've mixed together all the meal and the sugar, I'm gonna start adding the eggs, and one at a time is always a good idea, or two, but it doesn't take much. You just wanna mix this in very well until you have a nice smooth paste. For anybody that's got trouble with gluten, this is the perfect dessert, not a speck of flour in it. So now let me add a little bit of lemon zest. Let's set this to the side while we butter a springform pan. The easiest way for me to butter anything is to melt a little bit of butter in a bowl in the microwave and simply use a pastry brush to spread this butter around. Just make sure everything's really nicely coated because you want the cake to pull away from the pan easily when you're taking it out of the oven after it's cooled. I'm gonna pour it into the pan. You can see how thick it is, it's almost pasty. And as soon as we get all this wonderful batter out of the bowl, I'm simply gonna spread it around a little bit. Make sure it's all nice and even. And then we're ready to put it into a preheated 350 degree oven or 180 degrees centigrade and it's going to be in there for 30 minutes so I'll see you in just a little bit. While the cake is still in the oven, I did all the dishes, so that's all done. I have one more craft project to do. Santiago cakes, or Tarta de Santiago, always has a symbol in the center of it, and it's this symbol, which is the symbol of St. James. I found these online. You could probably do the same. And then I found ones that I thought would size best for the cake I'm doing. I already cut this one out because it was much easier to cut, 
but this one looks a little bit more like wrought iron. So I'm working at trying to do this and I've got time to spare while the cake finishes. So I'm gonna cut this out because then what we do with it is we lay it on top of the cake, take some powdered sugar, dust the whole cake, lift this off, reveals this as the image in the center and you'll see that when we finish the rest. But in the meantime, while we're waiting, I'm gonna keep going on my little project. I have to say, it's pretty tough to do. I wish I had smaller scissors like kids do, but I'll get there. So I'll see you in a few minutes. It's been 30 minutes. I finished my craft project. So we're ready to take the cake out, see how it looks, let it cool. I don't have a cooling rack here, but a splatter screen works pretty good in a pinch. And there's my timer. So I'm ready. Let's see what this looks like. Smells great. Oh, wow. Take a look. Golden brown, nice and puffy. I think it's gonna be delicious. So let's let it cool for a few minutes. Then I'll snap off the outer ring of this springform pan and we can finish decorating it. This has been cooling for about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna take off the top, just like that. If you've got a springform, you know what this is all about. You simply release it on the side and it pops off. And now we can see how really beautiful and brown and perfect the sides are on this. I'm gonna leave the bottom on here. I'm gonna put it, first I'm gonna dust it and then I'll put it on the plate so that we don't have powdered sugar all over. And I wanna take this rustic one that I actually finished. I don't know how kids do this. <laughs> this was a challenge and I'm going to pretty gently center this as best I can. So now all we have to do is very gently give a nice coating to the whole cake. And that, ah, oh, one more spot there. And I think that's enough. Now the tricky part is lifting this off without getting any powdered sugar underneath. Kind of worked, but it's not bad. I'll keep practicing and I know George won't mind because every time I practice, it's another cake. So let's dig in and see how tasty this is. Since it's almost lunchtime, I didn't have any lunch prepared, but I'm sure we won't mind if I begin lunch with a slice of cake. And typically this isn't adorned with anything else, but also very typically you serve it at the end of a meal with a coffee or a cortado, short coffee. Take a look, nice and fluffy, beautiful. Wow, really nice. Dust off that sugar. Let's have a taste, see what we think. And there goes the timer. So that means it's time to have a piece of cake. It's perfect. The eggs keep it moist, but it's very tender. And that nutty flavor from the almonds isn't overwhelming because almonds are really soft. But a touch of that lemon peel makes all the difference. I hope you get a chance to try this soon. As you can see, it's super easy. Very few ingredients. I know you can pick them up at the grocery store in your neighborhood too. So make it. Let me know how it goes in the comments. And let me know if there's another dish you'd really like to see me prepare on my Spanish kitchen. Hope to see you back here soon. Ciao.